Welcome back to another reading and collecting of The Used Child. With me, Kindar, the Tiger Rights, and Ty, the Tiger Supervisor. If you want to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. Today we are doing the epilogue. Thyatoga Prison Ship, somewhere in the vastness of space. Elise Roma enjoyed walking the halls of the ship, and she wasn't busy making sure the inventory of prisoners was accurate and that every cryopod was functioning properly. She liked simply walking through the corridors. Even when she was summoned by her superior, she made sure to enjoy the walk. It gave her time to prepare for the coming meeting, either making sure she had all the information she'd need or, as was the case now, she could simply prepare herself mentally since she hadn't been told what this was about. The crew she walked by mostly ignored her, and she ignored them. She had f a few friends, but they were either technicians or guards, and the odd of encountering one from either group on the command level was low. The odds were low. Were low. She walked by Exanian, scrubbing the floor. His antenna, antennas, and Okay, this this may not properly. His antennas vibrated before she before he lifted his head. He watched her with his disconcerning, multifaceted eyes, gave a nod, and went back to scrubbing. He wasn't what she preferred with this thin, scaly body. She didn't have, she didn't even know if he was actually male. She hadn't bothered studying his species. All she'd cared about was that he had equipment in the right location and that he could use it in a way to bring her pleasure. In exchange for spending nights in her bed, she made sure he had light duties instead of slowly wasting away in one of the tubes. She discovered at a young age that humans did nothing for her. At first, she thought it was men who didn't interest her, but she'd experimented and found that humans were just too boring, regardless of their gender. Aliens. Now they knew how to show her a good time, especially when they had the proper motivation. She left the Xenian behind without a second glance. The door to the bridge opened, and she entered the busy space. Officers manned the boards, hurried about on errands, and just talked among each other. She didn't have any reason to be here. Her duties kept her in the lower part of the ship. But when the captain called, he came. The man turned his chair and fixed his gaze on her, as, with the other rare occasions she'd, she'd seen him, his white jacket and pants were impeccable, not a speck of color on them. Even his hair was slowly turning that stark of white. <clears throat> you wanted to see me, Captain. I'd like you to explain this to me. He motioned for the communications, communications officer, and an image appeared between them. It was an alien, a Somalian, shoulder, shoulders and up. Black fur with possible dust on it, or it could be the poor quality of the image. Under was the bounty information. Tristan wanted for kidnapping. The amount made her breath catch. If money had been any kind of motivation, she would have deserted on the spot. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but other than this being a bounty, I'm not sure what you want me to do. The captain made another sign, accompanied with an annoyed accompanied with by, by an annoyed sigh. The body shrank and a list appeared next to it. She recognized this as the prisoner manifest. One entry was highlighted. Tristan, Amalian, C-10. Maybe you can explain to me how it is that one of our prisoner has kidnapped someone? She took her data pad and pulled up the information. Sir, this is either a joke or someone put the wrong face to the name. She brought up the image while sending an order to the tube to be pulled from storage. She sent the image next to that of the bounty. The coloring is wrong. Tristan's fur isn't black, it's brown. Without any detail, I can't say more, but she brought up the image from the, th the thawing lab. He's right there, as you can see. She zoomed in on the tube with the Somalian floating in the liquid. He wasn't moving, but she brought up the life sign display and confirmed he was doing fine. This is Tristan, nice and sleeping in C-10. He's been there since he was brought back. If you want, I'll be happy to take you to the lab, take you to the lab so you can check him over yourself. The men waved the suggestion aside. A joke, then? More likely a desperate attempt to get someone killed. 
with that kind of bounty, whoever it, that is will be hunted down by anyone with a ship. As soon as someone looks at the information closer, the bounty is going to be changed or removed. All right, good, good. So as long as he's here, I don't care who gets killed. He turned to face the front of the bridge, and a woman approached him with a data pad. Dismissed, Elise laughed. The Zanyan nodded to her again, but she ignored him. Something bothered her. Bounties for that kind of money would be checked before being approved. She did a search on the uh, for the bounty, looked for related information, and came up with footage. A fight on the wreck of a station. Sh uh, on the wreck of a or ship. A fight on a wreck of a station. Or on a ship. Or on a ship involving a Somalian. And human. And involving a Somalian and humans. One of a Somalian putting a body in the trunk of a hover. The quality of the fight was too low for her to do anything with. But the one with the hover had been taken by a good quality camera. She zoomed in and the Somalian's fur was dark brown and she could make out speckling in it. It was something of a coincidence that there would be two Somalian with the same body type and fur pattern. Although they weren't exact, an exact match. This one was bigger, was more muscular, more male. But it couldn't be Tristan. He was in the tube. Not only did the computer get camera say so, she'd done a visual check less than a month ago. And she remembered him. To, and she remembered him. How could she not? The way he looked as the cryo fluid sloshed off his body, matting the fur and leaving nothing to the imagination. She'd had such plan for him. If only he hadn't pulled off an escape. When he was finally brought back, she couldn't take the chance to release him, no matter how tempting he was. He'd escaped once, he did it a second time, and she let him out, and she'd let him out, her carrier would be over. Still, something nagged at her. She'd sent the order to leave the tube out, <clears throat> went to her room for a data chip, and headed for the, the lab. The cryo transition room, called the thawing lab by the technicians, was empty. Unless there was a need to move a prisoner out, there was no need to have anyone here. The tube marked seat 10, central pedestal, and there was a body in it. She checked the readout. Everything was optimal. She brought up the computer records, compared them, they matched. This was indeed Tristan, according to the computer. Then, she tapped her lip. Why is it you don't look right? She hadn't thought about it, about it until looking at the image of Somalian dumping the body, but... <clears throat> dump, she hadn't thought about it until... Looking at the image of a Somalian dumping at looking at the Somalian dumping the body, but didn't this one look the one in the tube look thinner, less muscular than she remembered? He could have lost mass while free, but Tristan hadn't struck her struck her as someone to let himself go. And really, with with the traveling he had to do, how long had he been free? A few subjective months? She looked at his midsection, but that was no help. She'd fantasized about it too long for her memory to be. So, for so long, her memory had become distorted, which was why she'd gotten the chip, the one with the scan she'd run on him herself as he was let out. Oh, the numbers of fantasy that had fueled. She inserted the chip in her data pad and placed both readouts side by side. Immediately she saw the difference, enough that she pulled out the DNA for both. Definitely not the same person. This wasn't the Somalian she'd released to hunt down the captain's escape plaything. She was by the calm before she stopped herself. She'd confirmed this was Tristan when he was returned. Sure, she'd use the records and the computer, but she could still be held accountable if someone had gotten into their system and changed that. But could... But could she be held accountable if someone had gotten into their system and changed that? If she told the captain, after telling him the bounty couldn't have been Tristan, what would he do? Who would he blame for the loss of revenue? She stepped back to the tube and tapped on it. If you aren't Tristan, you aren't going to be able to escape, will you? She looked him up and down, licking her lip. You certainly are a nice, you certainly are a nice specimen. After his return, she hadn't thought she could control someone like Tristan. But this Tamalian? Him, she could make hers for as long as he pleasured her. She shivered as she made plans. She couldn't just release him. Like the others, there was no way she could justify taking Tristan 
out to give him light duties. She'd have to make sure the ship still thought he was in his tube. That meant bringing in, bringing in one of her technician friends and making sure the Samarian kept to specific rooms so the ship wouldn't detect him. And a few guards, as well as one of medic. Fortunately, she knew one who still owed her a favor for that night of fun she'd arranged for him. Yes, with them, it would go perfectly. The Somalian stirred in her, stirred, 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 stirred in her bed. She watched him from the doorway, the stunner behind her back. She didn't think he'd try anything physical, but she wasn't taking any risk, not considering who this was. He coughed, looked around, then bolted to a seated position, eyes wide, ears back. Where? How? He noticed her, focused on her. Who are you? Where am I? He sounded scared. I was attacked. This crazy woman jumped me, beat me up. He touched his face. What happened? You're on the Sayatoga, uh, you're on the Sayatoga prison ship, Elite said. His eyes went one. Wider. Prison? Why? I haven't done anything. You're Tristan, a dangerous criminal, wanted for more death than I can count. Who? I'm not. My name is Justin. I own, I own, run and own Luminex. Found some fortitude. I demand that you release me immediately. Fortunately, that isn't going to happen. The ship thinks you're Tristan, so that's who you are. Check outside sources, he demanded. Luminex has my medical record. Elise shrugged. She walked to the bed, putting the stunner on the dresser on the way. That doesn't matter. If the captain finds out you're not Tristan, it's going to cost me my job, she sat on the end of the bed. How about you tell me why you arranged to have you take his place? I don't know. I've never heard of this Tristan. She smiled. That's a lie. You two are brothers. His demeanor changed, losing the fear and confusion. I see you did your research. I have to. Justin let himself fall back with a sigh. His head hit the pillow and he placed his hand on his chest. He wants me dead. He's been trying to kill me ever since we were kid. I, kids. I can't stand that he, he can't stand that I'm smarter than he is. I guess using me to ensure no one would come looking for him was a backup plan. I'd almost escaped, too. I was, a, <clears throat> I was at the spaceport when that crazy bitch jumped me. He looked around. So, why am I here? This doesn't look like much of a cell. She moved closer. The Sayatoga keeps its prisoner in cryotubes. Fewer, trouble that, fewer troubles that way. Justin's ears tilted. Really? Then how did Tristan escape? Because of the captain's arrogance. He thought he could use the prisoners to capture one, one who'd managed to get loose on the ship. All it caused was chaos, turned into a mass escape attempt. Tristan and that prisoner who'd gotten loose were the only ones to, su to succeed. How did you know he was held here? Our survival depends on knowing where he is. He looked around. Is this your room? She nodded. It's very nice. Why am I here? <clears throat> she moved next to him and placed a hand on his chest, rubbing it. I have a proposal for you. Move their hand to his stomach. If you agree to stay with me, to do what I say, I can keep you out of the cryotube. Her hand reached further down, under the covers. She rubbed his groin. Justin let out a small moan, placed his hand behind his head. And what exactly am I to do for you? She wrapped her, an her hand around the shaft. Pleasure me. Justin moaned and thrust up. Oh. I'll be able to do that. I'll be happy to do that. He licked his lips. You have things in hand. Are you going to use me or do I, you need me to do the work? He smiled. You seem rather eager to agree to this. He squeezed and Justin let out a purr mixed with the moan. He looked at her, eyes half-lidded. If there's one thing I excel at, it's doing whatever I need to, to su so I'll survive. He smiled at her ran a lo his long tongue over, tongue over his muddle. And this has to be the most pleasurable boy I've ensured my survival. So yes, I... I'm more than happy to pleasure you. She released him and stood. She undressed slowly, watching him watch her. He couldn't stop licking his lips. His ears pointed forward and his eyes shone with desires. Not only did he want to do this for his survival, but he wanted her, her body. She smiled. This would be even easier than, she, easier than she'd expected. 
unlike the others who she had to convince this was to their advantage and who then had to find a way to work themselves to having sex with another species, this man was eager for it. Nude, she stood there. He extended his hand and she took it. Uh, letting him pull her. Well, letting him pull her on up. Pull her. Let's see. On top of him. She threw the covers off and admired his hardness. And as she straddled him, he was already panting as she ground against him. As he, as he ground against her. She moved against him, rubbing to get herself wet, and then moved to take him in her. He tried to grab her hips to take control, but she batted the hand, his hands away. With a mischievous grin, he put his hand behind his head, acknowledging his defeat, but promising he wouldn't give up. Yes, she would enjoy this, she thought as she moved on him. enjoy him he wouldn't just submit to her he would try to take charge to be the one in control but she would teach him his teach him this was much better when he let her do when he let her tell him how it would go he would learn to follow her lead when she was ready she changed her angle and they and they moaned in unison she panted as she lay on top of him that had been even more pleasurable than she'd imagined. The Somalian was talented and built in such a way he'd hit all the right spot inside her. He turned and she slipped onto the bed next to him. He pulled her against him. He was still ready to go, she could feel, but he didn't, try, he didn't thrust. He let her rest back against his chest while his hand moved between her legs. I think you misunderstand what it means to do what I say, she said. He moved a finger and she moaned. I am the one in control. He moved it again and she whimpered. After her first orgasm, he'd been, he began taking charge of how he pleasured her. He nibbled her neck. I'm used to running things, mistress. He met her moan loudly. I'm afraid it's going to take time before I fully understand my role. She bit her lip to stifle a scream. Do you need to arrange to train me multiple times a day? She yelled and he continued pleasuring her until she sagged. And here I thought, she said, panting, that you'd fight me. He kissed the back of her neck. How would I ever want to do that? He nibbled the lobe of her ear. I have any idea how long I've looked for someone willing to take charge. He moved his hand between her legs again, and she moaned. Every woman I've been with wanted me to own them. He rested his muzzle by her ear and whispered. Do you wonder thing? Yes, she asked grimly. Is your ambition limited to me, or can you see yourself owning so much more? This concludes <clears throat> The Used Child, book three in the Tristan series. If you enjoyed this, please give a like. If you want to know when the next book's going to be posted, subscribe and hit the bell. If you want to read the other books in the series, they are available on our all major he retailers. If you want to support me, as well as get access to basically everything I've written, that is on my Patreon. If you want to listen to these recordings happening live, it's on Twitch every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. The links are in the notes. And with that, I shall wish you a good day.